Okay, we'll begin the uh, recreation culture portion of the meeting. Uh, the first and only item on the agenda is a delegation. Uh, Mary Cahill and Bill Murray from RCDSB uh, regarding the, uh, the Cobham District Public School Playground Agreement. The floor is yours, guys. Um, so this past spring, we had the... Um, I'm the Community Use of Schools coordinator, and we had two groups using the soccer field at the same time. One of the groups had registered a permit through Community Use of Schools. The other group was showing up at the same time, and they said that they had an agreement in place, which I was unaware of. I've been with the board for two and a half years, so we had to look into the agreement. Um, it doesn't say anywhere that any specific group has the priority use of the field, so what we would like to do is have community use, like permit rentals, continue to go through the board instead of and direct people there. I guess they understood that they had priority use because of the 1991 agreement. Um, <laughs> what would you like to say? Oh. <laughs> Nothing. Um, the the other piece to this is because we've got infrastructure to manage use, we. Um, we see it as, as a benefit to the, to the township because you're going to reduce that liability of, of using that space and we can ensure that we don't have two groups fighting over it. We can, you know, we can slot times for different groups to, to be allowed to use it. And you also, because right now you, you potentially could have been um, doing maintenance, or not maintenance on the equipment, but uh, repairs to the equipment that that liability will be gone if we just manage this strictly through community use. Maybe if you would, just, just back up for a second to uh, what the current agreement states for, uh, for everybody in the room. Um, I know it, it's about a five page, but just to summarize it quickly, to, I know there's a, there's a, a school uh, board group, I believe it's called, that, that yeah. uh, is involved. Sorry, there was a community group involved in developing this agreement and raising the funds to put some play structure and soccer field um, equipment into Cobden in 91. Um, and so the agreement says that use by the community can be used outside of school hours, but not conflict with school hours. Um, the capital cost for the instruction and all that, the construction and all that stuff was the responsibility of the community school association and the village. Um, and yeah, so maintenance on all equipment and facilities was the responsibility of Cobden Community School Association and the village. Um, the cost of ongoing ground maintenance shall, shall be paid for by the board. Um, and it says that the town is responsible for providing like liability or insurance coverage against liability for any of the public use of the facilities. Um, that's kind of the cliff notes version. So what, what's the process right now if somebody wants to, so say a soccer group wants to book the, uh, the ground, what, what's the process right now? So we have a, on our website, on the RCDSB website, there's a site under the schools tab, uh, communities of schools, and you can online, you can register online to book the space and the outdoor field is an available space for Cobden Public School. Um, so they would put a permit in. There isn't a cost. We don't have a cost for our fields except in one area because of all the maintenance associated with it. Um, and they just have to provide insurance to cover for liability costs. So. And where, where could the mix up between the two groups then? So one went ahead and did that, yeah. and the other group did what? The other group just was showing up at the same time. So, and they felt that they had priority over the group that had went through the community use of schools because they were aware, I guess, of this agreement and believed that they had the priority use. So we tried, it did work out in the end, but just to avoid future conflicts, it would be nice to direct everybody through the community use program. Thank you. Councillor Jackson? Is there any fee at all to any users to rent the property? There's no fee for the field other than covering insurance, which you can purchase through our registration, like through our registration. And how much would that be, say, if somebody were to use it once a week during some, like, you know, for a couple months? It's, it's 
the most expensive is if somebody's there for like eight months, it's around $108 for... Okay, so it's, so it's really reasonable. Yeah, it's not expensive. And if somebody were to use the uh, playground, you know, just the public to use the playground off school hours, is there any issue with that? No, we don't rent out the... That we and the basketball court and all of that. So unless, unless, like, we don't rent out the playground. It's not a rentable space. Right. We just have the soccer field as a rentable space because I know, I guess, other user groups have used it in the past, and this way, um, people can make sure that they're there at a lot of time and there's no conflict. Um, but I understand that the school is used like a public park. Like I. My yeah. niece and nephew are here, and they go and play there and stuff like that. So I understand that it is used as a public park, but it's just a soccer field. It's, I know that user groups do use it for practices. Is there still a ball park there? Is there a backstop? Back yeah. The backstop, because sometimes they use that, yeah. Okay, so it's basically just for the soccer field is what your concern is. That's the only conflict we've had I so far. So it's just if people are using the space for an organized activity, it would be preferable that a, a permit is put through the community use program. Councillor Rieger? My question is, is that community groups still, are they still um, um, out there or do they still exist or did this second group when they arrived at the field just automatically assumed they could just use it? Was there a second group that actually there were two, out there? There were two groups. Um, our community use clerk who kind of handles the permits. She spoke to the group that had the permit there and she kind of communicated that they have to be on separate nights. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have to look back. I don't think a second permit was put in. So, so just that, that group may not even exist at this point in time is yeah. my point. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't know. I would assume. I don't know of them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. So. I, I'm not sure I understand how dissolving this agreement is going to resolve a conflict like that. Because really that, that, that other group had no right to the field if they didn't go through the proper channels and book it anyway, right? Right. So I, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss to figure out how dissolving this agreement. Maybe you can help. Okay, so, so our view is that there are, there are, at the current time, there are two parallel processes. So if we ensure that there's just the one process through community use, we we negotiate between the three par or between the board and the two parties to come up with an agreement. We, you know, we we always make sure we we can get people to fit in. Maybe not always at their first choice, but but right now, if we've got one group claiming we've got a legal agreement in force, um, and they could have precedence over our community use users, so we we would like one one path going forward on this. Right. Councillor Rieger? Just ask one more question. Are we unique in this situation? Are there other, uh, are there other groups out there within, you, within the school board that, um, that offer this, or are we, are we unique in this? No, there are other schools that have the soccer fields used by the public, but they do run it through the community use program. Um, we have only have one school where the town looks after the fields. They do all the maintenance of the fields, and they uh, do the rental of the field. But otherwise, we haven't had an issue where there's been a conflict between user groups. Um, we do have reciprocal agreements at several sites, so they uh, they know to direct if somebody comes to the town or anything like that. They know to direct the public to to us for use of the school fields. Councillor Jackson. I guess the only question I would have is that we should contact the Cognitive Community School Association if there is such a beast anymore and uh, see what use or otherwise they would require and uh, see if they have any issues with it before we say yay or nay. But I, I don't have an issue with it because I think one group booking is better than having conflicts and having the public have an altercation out on the field. But um, perhaps somebody could contact the school to see if there is a Cobden Community School Association. I know they were quite active when we put the playground in back then because my kids were young then. And <laughs> I didn't realize it was that long ago. <laughs> but I guess it is. But so I, I have a, my, my concern is that you know, the agreement covers a lot more than just that soccer field. So the agreement covers the playground, 
the basketball courts, uh, parking it mentions in here, uh, public use on the weekends. So I have to be honest with you, I'm not in favor at this point in time of just, just um, canceling the agreement. I'd be in favor of looking at the agreement and redoing the agreement that would reword how it is to be booked. But uh, I have concerns for the, for the town and the township uh, that uh, we have no control over use of that public uh, property of playground and, and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I hear your concern and understand it. Right now at all our sites across the board, there's unlimited access to those playgrounds. Um, so I, I certainly have less of a concern, but I, it, if it feels like you're, you're moving backwards and giving something up, then, then I, I get that. But I think we, we would want to, to look at costs of repair and maintenance and make sure that they, because you're, you're on the hook for that, that, that you're going to be... We are now anymore. though, right? But we've never enforced that. Right. But we will. Right. <laughs> now that we're aware of the agreement, we we would have right. a duty to do that. that that's a two-way street, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, sorry, Reed. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? So, uh, yeah, Mayor. I agree with uh, Councillor Olmstead that. Um, we would look like we were going backwards to us to our own in our own mind, and um, possibly because there's only one concern that if we changed our agreement to allow the booking for the soccer field to go through that organization, when we check to see that the cons any if there are any concerns, but I don't think we need to change anything else in it. That doesn't seem to be a concern with you people either. So, okay. Well, we're not paying for anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> but Don't stand us a bill. <laughs> but the agreement does state that that's yeah. the issue. So and that, that could be changed. Be that changed. wording can be changed too. But it's the, the concern for you is the soccer field. That's my point. Yeah. So, so that's all we really need to address at that and the maintenance. Because if we're not, we can step out of that too. So in other words, we need to look at this internally before we look at it outside. So at, at other facilities, is, is there an agreement that, that shows that the public can use the school facilities? I, I'd like to see what, what's in place at other... So on a Saturday, if you close the gates, you close the gates. No, nobody can... Like it, it's your determination, right? Right. right. And that, so that's obviously the concern in, in Cobden. Is, I don't know if you've watched the news the last year or two, but you know, uh, uh, playground trying to go in, trying to be built in town, that kind of stuff. So there's not enough. The feeling is there's not enough recreation facilities already. That if we potentially ended up closing one or not giving access to the public, that that'd become a real issue. Yeah. Councilor Kai, uh, I just want to say in Beechburg, the playground's always open. Kids are always in there, so there's no. I don't see a problem. That way, I can't see why the board would do that. Okay, so we're going to get in contact with to see if there is a community group, a community school association. Um, and we we do have the uh, the request, so we'll we'll get back to you shortly. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And that's it for the recreation.